everybody. Uh, we have microphones on both sides of the room. Uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get you the mic. Uh, Good day. <laughs> first question for Aaron. Aaron, not that it needs to be of the uh, Newt Rockney variety, but do you deliver a speech to your guys before a game like this, or are you a believer in just treating this like any other game? I, I spoke to the team yesterday uh, briefly, short and sweet. Um, so, you know, I, I, I try and communicate with the guys as much as I can individually, collectively throughout the year, but um, I did address them as a as a club yesterday, just for a couple minutes. What was your message? We're ready, and you know, it was just it was for our room. Other questions for Aaron? Uh, Barry, we'll get you the mic. And yesterday we were talking to you. We weren't sure what Oakland was doing with its pitching. But what do you think now? You had one of these games on September fourth with the same guy starting, and you handled that one well. What do you think of going into this game? facing something like this? Well, it, it certainly presents a different kind of challenge. Um, you know, the one good thing is is we've at least experienced it to some degree this year. Obviously, what Tampa has done throughout the year, um, Oakland, Minnesota did it to us. Um, so it's not something that's foreign. It's, it's something that the guys have experienced and – so I think it helps, hopefully, with our preparation and how guys prepare as different guys roll in, you know, as, as you're facing potentially a different guy every at-bat. So um, I think the guys take a little bit of comfort in the fact that w we've done this a little bit. So hopefully uh, that'll be something that benefits us. Against the right wall, Andy. So Aaron, to, w to what extent are your is your players' preparation different today in that, I mean, just can't watch video of a particular starting pitcher or in other ways that the way yeah, I mean that's it's kind of an individual thing everyone's a little bit different with how how much information they want how they watch video Marcus and PJ and you know we have our hitter meeting every single day where um, guys communicate with one another we'll talk about you know they'll talk about I should say um, a handful of their pitchers you know, and, and obviously we've had a lot of time leading up to this to prepare for um, the different guys in their bullpen. So I feel like our guys are up to speed as much as each of them want to be on, on who they might see tonight. And Dave, to your left, Aaron. Aaron, uh, it's unusual, obviously, that, that a new manager would take over a team that, you know, was at the brink of the World Series the year before, and, and even for you as a first-time guy. Does the success or failure of, of this six-month season just ride on this one night? Uh -huh. is, it, is it that simple? You know what? I, I mean, that kind of—I leave that to you guys. I'm—I'm I'm consumed with this, so you know, I'm—we're—we're we're pouring into trying to prepare for tonight in a winner go home game. Um, I feel like we're in a good place as a club. I feel like we're prepared and ready as we can be, and hopefully, uh, we'll go out and put our best foot forward and and take care of business and and move on. But um, as far as judging what all this means. You know, I didn't get into it for that. That's that's for you guys, respectfully. And row right behind Dave. Hi. Um, you have a couple of rookies going tonight, and uh, Judge was in this role, I would say, last year. Um, what kind of leadership advice has he given these uh, younger players for this game tonight? Um, Aaron Judge is a really, really good leader. And, you know, especially for being a young player himself, um, he has all those kind of qualities that you want in, in a guy to be the face of your club, to be one of the leaders of your club. And, uh, you know, the intangible things that he brings away from just how good of a player he is between the lines um, are – he's special. And and I know um, he's played a role in, in – helping kind of ease the transition for for our young players our rookie players that have had major impact for our club this year but i also think it's a tribute to those rookies and who they are that they've kind of handled everything so well this year and all the things that come with being uh transitioning to becoming a major league player certainly in this city and playing for this franchise and they've handled it so well yeah well from right 
Aaron, how do your emotions compare heading into the situation as a manager compared to the same situation as a player? More anxiety, less anxiety, no anxiety? Similar. Um, you know, we're playing for a lot. And you pour a lot into this. You know, whether you're a player, whether you're in my position, whether you're behind the scenes, whether you're a front office member, you know, a lot of people um, pour a lot into us being in this position to have a chance and um, to playing in the postseason. Um, so with that comes a lot of emotion, a lot of excitement, anxious butterflies, the whole bit. And and I would say that's fairly similar now as, as when I was a player. Uh, Ken, right by Wally. Aaron, as the as the son of a big league manager, and then really as a player from really a a different era in terms of, of, of how the role of manager has evolved. How comfortable were you with, with the new place the managers have just with, with so much front office input now? And, and, and how have you found it uh, this season doing that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's all I know. So I've loved it. I've loved every step of the way. I, I, I mean, I, I love the game. Um, I love the major league season, the challenge of it, the peaks and valleys of it. Um, you know, the tough times, um, the really good times, I appreciate it all. And, uh, you know, and and so I'm just kind of living in it and entrenched in it on a daily basis. And from this chair, this is in 2018, all I know, and I've loved it. I mean, it's all an adjustment, but not, 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 Nothing out of the ordinary, I would say. Uh, third row center, John. Aaron, obviously, had so many injuries in the second half of the year. Would you say that this is as healthy as the team has been in months coming into tonight's game? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like the last over the last ten days, we've kind of gotten our team whole again and back, and that's comforting. And that's comforting going into this game and into the postseason. And as I've said, I feel like with the group we have in there. Look, anything can happen, obviously. Um, but I feel like we can play and beat anyone. And I think our guys know that. I think at their core they know that and believe that. And hopefully that serves us well going into tonight. Yeah, fourth row, Ryan. Aaron, as the home team in a game like this, uh, in what tangible ways can a raucous crowd make an impact? <clears throat> I think it's a big deal. Um and I was I was on the National League side last year covering, and um, but I watched pretty much all the games, and I remember watching with my sons last year and seeing for the first time to me like where Yankee Stadium was coming across the TV. You know, it was alive. Um, and it was it was palpable watching at home, you know, to to see how, you know, to see a home field advantage really happen. And I think that's a tribute to the fans. I think it's a tribute to our players and the connection that this group of players, that this kind of new generation as we've gotten younger, the connection that they have with our fan base. Um, I can't wait to see them out there and, and see the environment that they're able to create. And hopefully we can give them even more reason to to hopefully give us what we believe is a real home field advantage. Got three more right there. Aaron, in a game like tonight, what do you think could be the biggest difference in your job compared to the regular season? Um, <clears throat> you know, first of all, there's no tomorrow. Um, you know, obviously – you're a little tend to be a little more aggressive with how you potentially use your bullpen. You know, you're not thinking in terms of I need to give this guy a day or stay away from this guy or this guy's pitched a few days in a row. I mean, we are fresh. We have a couple starters in our bullpen. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is you you probably just a, a little more aggressiveness and, and and urgency with everything you do, knowing that there is no tomorrow. So. I think that's the biggest difference. Uh, Tyler, second row right. And certainly in the postseason, we've seen plenty of examples going way back of the importance of the bullpen. 
but why do you think it's more it seems more important now than ever and why are managers so aggressive in these kind of settings in changing pitchers so often <clears throat> well i i think i think the bullpens have become across the board especially with most of the really good teams more dynamic you know and or more guys kind of in a way bred for these kind of roles and and built for these kind of roles and and understanding that you know when a guy comes in for a, a few hitters and facing them one time with electric stuff or a, or a pitch that's designed to get a particular hitter out or a particular matchup i think uh teams in a lot of ways kind of build things out that way now um that being said you know great starters are capable of and and with Seve tonight just because we have a loaded pen and guys fresh and rested if Seve's rolling he could pitch very easily deep into this game and and it wouldn't surprise me and and uh and I think he's very capable of it and we'll wrap up third row left, Anthony. Aaron, you mentioned the rookies. Uh, what about Andujar and Torres' individual personalities do you think has allowed them to have the success? And I'm sure you think th this moment won't be too big for them. I think first and foremost, I think they have a lot of confidence. Um, <clears throat> and confidence is, is a powerful thing in baseball and in sports. And I think they know they can play. And they know they belong here. And that's served them well. And that's helped them through the roller coaster that can be um, a major league season. And I think that's allowed them to, to handle things really well um, and, and allowed them to be really consistent at, at, at what they've done. Um, I also think both of them um, are smart. And smart matters and helps when you're – when you have, when you're a smart guy, um, that helps you in this game. I think in a big way. And both those guys have shown a real aptitude and an ability to make adjustments at this level. Aaron, thanks so much. All right, appreciate it.